Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the NEN webinar. Uh, my name is Anju, and on behalf of NEN and Vadhani Foundation, I would like to invite you all for this webinar, Design Thinking, and would also like to introduce our expert speaker, Mr. Rishabh Jhol. Uh, he's an advisory professional with a pension for finance, analytics, and design thinking, an MBA from Bentley University, and an executive degree in design thinking from the University of Pennsylvania. Rishabh started out as a business advisor at CEE, CEB, where he thought partnered with more than 100 chief audit executives and chief risk officers. He also led the launch of JabongWorld.com, after which he founded Kashi Vinu Advisory Services, where he provides data analysis and research support to politicians and corporations. Before I hand over the floor to Rishabh, there are a few reminders for the audience. You will all be on mute. You may ask questions by typing in the panel provided. Over to you, Rishabh. I'm making you the presenter right now. And uh, you can start off with the presentation now. All right. Thank you so much, Anju. Um, thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. I've uh, just accepted um, uh, uh, accepted myself as a screen. So just let me know if you are able to see my screen. I'm. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. We, we, we are able to see your screen, screen Rishabh. Perfect, perfect. Thank you so much. So let's begin. So um, good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening, wherever you are, our friends uh, and uh, fellow entrepreneurs uh, all over the world. Uh, welcome to this uh, webinar on design thinking. Uh, it's, uh, I can't thank uh, National Entrepreneurship Network enough for the effort that they are uh, putting in to promote entrepreneurship. Uh, in the country and in the region. I think um, as entrepreneurs, sometimes journey can get a little lonely and you need organizations and ecosystem enablers like uh, Vadwani Foundation, like the uh, National Entrepreneurship Network to take people uh, people forward and keep them committed and passionate towards their towards their vision and business. Um, Anju has done a really good job of introducing me, so I'll just, uh, but I'll just tell you very briefly about uh, uh, who I am. Um, so I started design thinking from uh, University of Pennsylvania. I was part of their uh, social impact strategy group, uh, wherein you study uh, how to apply design thinking to solve messy problems, uh, uh, which have uh, a lot of uh, social change angle, including into them. Um, uh, other than other than the work and education, what I'm really passionate about is solo traveling and writing. In fact, I've written uh, two fiction novels. Uh, they are available to uh, purchase on Flipkart and Amazon. So I thought I'll just put a plug in there. And I think um, the reason I uh, wanted to highlight uh, travel and writing aspect of my personality is because a lot of times design thinking is about empathizing with your customer, empathizing with the situation and the problem and how you can kind of come up with a solution uh, which allow uh, which you arrive at by connecting with your uh, constituents and travel and writing allows me to do so there would be opportunities for you to figure out what are those things that allow you to be a better design thinker through your uh, through your passion uh, before before we dive into the content let me thank a very important person who has been instrumental in me bringing this message to you uh, uh, Doreen Lorenzo. So those of you who know about the field of design thinking would probably know her already. But for those of you who uh, who don't know who Doreen Lorenzo is, so Doreen is at the pantheon of design thinking. She led one of the top design thinking firms in the world called Frog Design. Uh, and she was there for 16 years before moving to Quirky, where she led the growth and held their strategic priorities. Uh, she's currently an active angel investor and mentor. Uh, I met her at a re uh, recent networking event in Bangalore, and despite being supremely busy, she was extremely generous with her time and guidance, so she helped me put together this uh, following insights that I'm going to share with you on design thinking. So, uh, so yeah, so thank you again, Doreen, and let's, uh, let's begin. Uh, so what is design thinking? Uh, look, uh, design thinking can feel overwhelming. There are multiple definitions out there many highlight what design thinking is and an equal number of those highlighting what design thinking is not. So it can be daunting to get the concept. Is it just about product design? 
is it about systems thinking is it all of it does it apply to every problem that you're gonna find in your business so I will attempt to answer each of these questions through examples my hope is that by the end of the 45 odd minutes that you spend with me uh, you will be able to develop a better sense of uh, of this concept but let's first understand what design thinking process seeks to do for you uh, and before I before I uh, highlight something on this slide just want to uh, apologize if you are uh, hearing a little bit of uh, background noise I'm uh, in Bangalore at this conference called the surge conference it's um, they're supposed to be the largest uh, conference in the in the world but um, they, they're kind of organizing it in, in Bangalore and I'm, uh, I was attending it and I uh, uh, took this one hour to uh, uh, to speak with you and um, uh, there are a few people passing so like we'll just ignore that and uh, uh, I'll try to ensure that the disruption is minimal so yeah so let's first understand what design thinking process seeks to do for you uh, as this simple but powerful chart uh, developed by Daniel Newman at the central office of design highlights uh, design takes you from data slash research slash insights to clarity and it is through a process of rapid prototyping so let me stop here for you to appreciate this graph we hear and read so much about big data uh, nowadays everybody is kind of talking about uh, what data and big data is it but it carries a lot of noise as well so one often struggles with how to use big data how to make sense of it for better business decisions design and design thinking helps you cross that uh, chasm so so what will you learn today so there are there are three things that I'm going to uh, go over in this presentation with you first is you will learn what design thinking is second you will learn how it has been successfully used and third you will learn the frameworks to put it into practice so look uh, design thinking is such a vast topic and it requires such expertise and time that it will be presumptuous of me to think that I can teach and you can. Yeah, so uh, diamond is a good symbol because of two things. Mm. Yeah. Diamond is Ratna. Yeah, S sorry. So, uh, to, so that uh, it will be presumptuous of me to think that you can. Uh, I can teach and you can learn in 45 minutes so what we will be focusing on our discussion today is about visual design uh, designing which is uh, so visual design is designing product artifacts after understanding consumer pain points and then designing solutions that motivate customer behavior so this aspect of design thinking came up as the most pressing problem that um, the, that the members uh, in the NEA network face so is design thinking more than that of course it is there are aspects to uh, design thinking that relate to systems thinking and I will cover those topics in subsequent webinars uh, that we will build on from the content we have here but for our discussion today let us somebody agree on the so somebody so design thinking is a human centered creative iterative and a collaborative approach to finding the best ideas and ultimate solution so let us go through the definition of uh, all four key tenets of this uh, definition that we see on the screen right now but it is important for us to spend time on really understanding this definition so as this definition shows design as a discipline uses the designer's sensibility and methods to match what people need and what is technologically feasible and economically viable so that should then feed into your business strategy and into your customer value and market opportunity so let us understand the first aspect which is that design thinking is human centered so like I said before design thinking starts with empathy you start from what people users consumers need from you or want to do when they interact with you and your product so their motivations and problems uh, what are what are the problems that they're trying to solve 
uh, now to quote Steve Jobs here, uh, he was famously asked in terms of where does his product uh, development begin? Does he start with technology or does he start with experience? And he said that it is always better to start from a standpoint of how the consumer will experience the solution and then design a technology around it rather than start from technology and then adapt that technology to uh, user behavior. So that should give you a glimpse into why empathy is key. It's not about you the entrepreneur, uh, you need the ability to understand and share the feelings of your customers. So design has to be set in the context of customer market that you are targeting. So let me explain this with an example. How many of you have uh, heard of the taxi service Ola? I, I, I'm sure most of the members and clients dialing in from India have. But for the benefit of the friends joining from the rest of the world, Ola is a taxi service in India much like Uber. And on the first look, it actually appears like an Indian version of Uber. Uh, as you can see on the slide, the app design of Ola looks very similar to that of Uber, although not as intuitive, intuitively designed probably. But here's the kicker. It has 75% of the market, while Uber has only 5%. And then let me add here, this, these are uh, data from uh, uh, Ola's last year's um, uh, uh, submissions in terms of uh, financial performance by their investors. Right? So what's going on here? Why does Ola have such a huge market share? Now there are a few factors, uh, one of them being uh, Ola introduced cash payments uh, and Uber uh, which had brought in the systems from US and applied it to the Indian market without truly understanding the Indian context came up with the cash payments much much later which uh, due to which they couldn't capture the bulk of the market. Uh, secondly, Ola launched uh, something which is very particular to the Indian context is Ola Auto which Uber did not have. And the third, and I think this is something that I've gotten from uh, interacting with a lot of uh, people who work at Ola and at Uber, and especially the drivers and uh, uh, having conversations with Bhavesh Agarwal on a couple of occasions, uh, they focus a lot on driver delight. They kind of, they treat the drivers uh, because, again, being an Indian company, understanding of the Indian context, much like their own um, own family, and that is one of the key reasons which undermines all the other reasons we've discussed for Ola stealing a march over Uber. Ola's success has forced Uber to change its global standard policies to compete. So that is what is important. Uh, you have to, whenever you go into a market, you have to understand its design language. Uh, here is the thing. The primary language of countries in the developed world, such as US, is convenience. While the primary design language of countries in emerging world, such as India, is of practicality. So as a business, if you want to succeed in any country, you need to learn the design language of that market. You must focus on understanding the local culture and context. You cannot just create a me too company and apply your models from uh, those countries in new markets. You need need to talk to customers. And in fact, Doreen kind of validated this hypothesis. She highlighted that it frustrates her how little time companies spend talking to their customers. So if you walk away from this webinar learning just one thing for growing your business, learn this. You have to talk to your customers more than your competition does. Empathize with them. It will give you a new perspective of the problem that they are facing. And this in turn will give you insights into new solutions that you may have not thought of before. Alright, so now moving on to the second aspect of our definition which is that design thinking is a creative process. Now design thinking stimulates you to look beyond uh, and look at the situation differently and come up with a new solution that go beyond and improve the existing alternative. In this, integrative thinking is the key. You need the ability to look at the different aspects of a problem. Imagine, who would have imagined a library without people or books? A library without books was unthinkable. And now, it just almost seems inevitable. Earlier, we used to go to the libraries today. Now, libraries come to you. So, in your business, think about what would be the creative solution that you can uh, remove say the physical aspect of it and move it virtually and that is where innovation could lie. Moving on to the third aspect of the definition that design thinking is iterative and as they say the road to success does not follow a straight line. 
the more you are able to loop through which is understand create and learn cycle the higher chance you have of getting good results as a design thinker stop discussing and start working you have to make your ideas tangible do prototyping a prototyping is essentially thinking with your hands that allows you to test your hypothesis so again failure is a necessary part of the process experiment of trial and error are key when you think about design thinking as an iterative process finally the final aspect of a design thinking definition is that design thinking is collaborative working collaborative in groups to devise solutions for problem it what it does it it allows you to discard the bad ideas hold on to the pieces of the good ones and eventually arrive at the right solution so let me give you an example of uh, one of the leading design thinking organizations ideo that pioneers collaborative design thinking so i had an op opportunity to observe one of their brainstorming sessions in their boston office uh, what was fascinating for me that their goal wasn't to come up with that perfect idea their goal was to come up with a lot of ideas a lot of different solutions and then have a very collaborative and open mind to come up with wild solutions as well and that is the only way you get to good ideas is to have a lot of ideas to choose from so one of the suggestions i would have for you as entrepreneurs to run uh, design thinking uh, sessions with your team is to allow them to come up with as uh, out there solutions as possible and that is when you will see when they start thinking on the periphery of what is possible and what is not the real kick solution will come in so before uh, i move forward i just wanted to highlight uh, this uh, this really quote that i really like the uh, it's by john colco who is the vp of design at blackbird uh, he mentioned that design thinking is an essential tool for simplifying and humanizing and i think you will see this trend uh, again and again of humanizing the uh, the problem this slide is probably the most important slide that you're going to see in this presentation in fact uh, as we share this presentation with you after the session i would recommend you to take a print out of this slide and put it on your uh, on your workstation and uh, review it and view it and make it part of your work process and the work process of your team this slide was developed and promoted by universities like stanford and innovation firms like ido it says that design thinking is a user focus possible uh, uh there is a user focus and a possibility oriented innovation methodology that any team can apply to build creative solutions so basically design thinking uses a multi phase approach as you navigate through a series of phases that bounds between uh what we call focus and flare it is divergence and convergence uh, the diamond model uh to be to be exact so what you do is you first empathize with user as the first step you understand the experience you observe users and their behavior in context of their lives and you see how they engage with people in conversations and interviews then you take those needs and insights that you get from empathizing to define the problem you then it for in a way you have to define a problem worth solving and like it says on the slide have a bias towards action like problem that could be solved then thirdly you then you ideate and there are a number of techniques that you can use to ideate and generate many broad and uh, bold ideas about how you can address the challenges that you've defined so what i would recommend you to you to do is to explore a wide variety of large quantity of ideas that go beyond the obvious solutions to a problem so you have to separate the generation evaluation of ideas to give uh, imagination a voice uh, so to say fourth step in this process is the rapid prototyping and i can't stress stress enough how important it is for you to uh, prototype which is thinking with your hands the goal of the prototype is to create something that helps you learn more about the user and the problem it is very different from creating a prototype that takes say 6 months and 1 million to build it's about doing things in hours maybe days uh, and just a prototype can be can be anything it can be a storyboard a cardboard a duct tape representation a role playing session whatever 
whatever you have to go for the lower lowest resolution prototype it's it's kind of better to engage in the imagination of your team to help fill the gaps where new ideas exist Finally, in this process, what you need to do is you have to iterate through these processes and test uh, the prototype with users. If you aren't testing your ideas, uh, then you're not following through on the end and the entire process. You have to test early. You have to test often, and just ensure that you're not testing to impress someone. It is for you, and neither to validate your idea. It is for the team to collectively learn about it. So now, doing this whole process before you be even begin your product development cycle, it does five things for you. It improves it improves your customer focus. It increases the number of compelling options that you have. It allows you to get an agreement on uh, priorities. It gives you a foresight into viability issues, and finally, it improves your odds of success. Uh, please, please uh, take time to go through the slide. Read up more on this and uh, put it on your uh, on your workstation. This is something that will be very important for you to uh, bring in your daily uh, process. Let me now take you through some examples of uh, where design thinking has been applied. So uh, here is the example of Embrace. Um, this is one of the most celebrated examples in design thinking. If you've heard of this one before, it is worth exploring again. And if you haven't, pay very close attention as it is the epitome of uh, human centered design so there are uh, the problem is there were uh, 20 million premature low uh, premature or low birth weight babies born each year uh, and premature and uh, low birth weight babies are extremely delicate and are prone to uh, prone prone to death essentially uh, so temperature in the room could feel like uh, ice water and all so what the these traditional solutions available in the market uh, price the incubator that a premature uh, baby would need uh, are at $25,000 but and uh, like even if even if uh, you could make it available uh, to mothers the thing was uh, uh, the team from Stanford went to Nepal and studied what the problem was and they realized that the females who were giving birth generally were giving birth in their home they did not have the facility to go to their uh, go to the hospital and uh, so what was the solution? The solution you could have brought the incubator to their houses, but the thing was the power supply was so uh, uh, inefficient that you couldn't run it or uh, it wouldn't work. So the team uh, you did user empathy. They went and uh, understood what the problem was. They understood the context. They tried to realize the problem. And this team from Stanford, what they process came up with is this uh, Embrace Infant Warmer. So they looked at uh, how kangaroo mothers keep their uh, babies warm in their uh, body pouch, and they created something very similar, which was less than one percent of the cost of a, a traditional warmer, and it kept the baby's temperature. Uh, relatively uh, safer so that they could survive because of this they were able to save thousands and thousands of uh, of lives and now they've created like a separate company altogether for this and uh, uh, they've been one of the most uh, emphatic uh, champions of design thinking coming out from the Stanford design school um, let me take you to another example which is which again is my personal favorite it's an MRI machine that GE developed so again it's a fantastic technology uh, and you would go for an MRI test and it um, uh, tells you a lot about your about your health and you can take take decisions on that allows you to live longer with, with that knowledge but what they what they realized was that when they wanted children to use MRI technology, more than 80% of children had to be sedated before use of this technology because uh, they were scared of uh, how the machine operated and the sound that it made. So the guy who had created the machine, he said, let, let me let me see what uh, the environment children enjoy in. So he went to play schools, he went to uh, uh, children amusement parks. So looking at that, he started prototyping the machine. So the 
so what he did was he said that let's engage children in a story. So he designed the MRI machine in a way that it looked like a spaceship or a jungle and everybody part like they trained doctors to participate with children and nurses to kind of tra train them on. So they would tell, give children stories that you know you're, you're part of the ship and you're passing through a, a shark infested area and uh, your submarine will get attacked if you, if you uh, make any noise you have to keep quiet and children were enjoying this and they were kind of you know part of the whole story and they re uh, and in a way now they did not have to be sedated and everybody was taking it, uh, uh, using the process uh, and enjoying it. So that was one of the best things uh, that happened. Uh, led to a new problem though, that kids wanted to do it again and again. It's a costly process, so can't be done often. So here, here's what you see in terms of uh, what the real essence of design thinking or the visual design that we're discussing today is that your cus you have to be customer centric, you have to be customer focused, you start with customer, the quality, efficiency, service, reliability, everything starts with the customers. So what can you take away from the sessions today? The first thing is you have to understand and identify who your user is, you have to empathize with them. Second is you have to generate ideas in collaborative group settings. So empathy, collaboration with team, empathy with the consumer, collaboration with the team and finally you have to do rapid prototyping, prototype cheaply, quickly, often. Like you can take any example of your, uh, of your business and any problem that you're solving, try to create like a lowest common denominator, lowest cost uh, solution that will help you visualize what the solution will look like in real life and I think that is where you need to start. So these are the three things I would want you to take away from this. Again, you have to think like a, a designer, don't and this is a very important, so uh, when I was studying at uh, and at UPenn, one of my professors who teaches design thinking and has been teaching for the last uh, seven, eight years now, she said something which had a very profound impact on me and she said, you never design nouns, you design verbs. So you don't design what, you design an action, uh, what it intends to do for you. So always keep uh, this concept in mind that you never design nouns, you design verbs. Uh, and finally I'm going to leave you with this uh, image uh, which explains what designing the product or slash designing the noun means and what designing a verb or designing an experience means. Um, yeah, with that I will uh, I will close and open open for questions if, uh, if we have any and um, and yeah, I'll let uh, Anju take over. Thank you. Thank you uh, so much for in indulging with me. Uh, thanks so much, Risha, for that wonderful uh, presentation. Um, we have still, we're still waiting for people to write in some couple of questions. Now, there are two or three questions that have come up. Uh, one of the questions uh -huh. being um, asked, uh, one of the questions, one of the, one of the entrepreneur, uh, Rakesh, is asking, how do design thinking and traditional quantitative market research coexist? Can they really coexist? That's one of the question question that he's asking. Right. Uh, so, uh, one uh, again, it's a, one. It's a brilliant question, and I think it's a it's a question that uh, deserves to be uh, uh, deserves to be delved. Uh, I, I think if you go back to the beginning of the presentation, where we were talking about how right now big data is a buzzword, it's all pervasive, people are talking about uh, getting customer insights, getting customer data through insights and taking, uh, making decisions based on, on, on that data and your marketing analytics tools are there uh, which big data supports and those give you a lot of insights about customer behavior and they should definitely be tracked and they should definitely be used. However, data can only tell you uh, one this uh, only uh, only so much. Uh, so I'll answer that by uh, giving you examples of two companies, and which which should uh, kind of clarify that there is no one best approach and there is no one size fits all. But there are merits of both the technologies. So, for example, Google and Apple. Google is a heavily 
analytics based company they would do all they co collect a lot of customer data and they all the decisions that they take are very very data driven and then you have one of its competitors apple for example uh, and where steve jobs was fam was uh, had sometimes famously said that if you ask customers what they want they will only tell you what they have experienced so far as a leader in as an entrepreneur as a leader in technology as a as someone who is uh, uh, say at the cutting edge of uh, stuff happening you have to take a leadership position on what customers should want and once you once you give customers what they can have that changes their definition of what they want. so in a way there are two schools of thought as a business you have to take a decision on what will work best for you there is definitely a space for uh, analyzing data and using uh, traditional methods but at the same time you have to complement it with uh, uh, design thinking as well wherein you you kind of understand uh, and empathize with the user and design solutions that he will need he or she will need which they don't even know exist uh, and I will go back to uh, uh, one of those famous famous quotes uh, in from 1930s when Henry Ford was asked that uh, when Henry Ford was interviewed and he said that if I went to people and asked them uh, how what their idea of faster mobility was they would have told me that they wanted a faster horse nobody would have thought about uh, automobile so that is where uh, I think uh, using design thinking to be at the cutting edge of uh, technological progress or at the product innovation is what I would recommend entrepreneurs to do. But at the same time, yes, focus on collecting as much information as possible from uh, from your customers. Does, does that answer the question? I mean, um, Thank or, or I mean, if you if you are or team any and would like to add something, uh, would love to know. Uh, no, no, thank you. Thank you, Rishabh. I think that pretty much, uh, yeah, it, it does answer the question. Now, we have two people asking similar question, Vivek and uh, Niranjan. They're asking, can you give us, give them some Indian examples on design thinking? Okay, sure. Um, so, uh, one of the examples that we, uh, that we saw was uh, around, um, uh, uh, around Ola, for example, the way they were able to bring in, uh, and again, design thinking does not necessarily have to only be at the product level. It has to be at a business level, wherein, because we are talking about visual design right now, we are talking about how customers can work with, um, uh, uh, like you have to go through with the customer on a customer journey. Uh, so Ola did that uh, wonderfully, wherein they understood that most of the people who are used to uh, uh, using public transport or uh, uh, who hail cab uh, services, the, their primary uh, mode of transport outside of uh, trains and buses is an auto, which a uh, which a uh, uh, international company will not. Uh, I mean, a, a knowledge that international company will not have. So essentially, what they were able to do was they were able to bring in this innovation of uh, bringing on Ola Auto much before. Uber could even think about uh, this local context, and at the same time, the cash payments. So this is this is one of the uh, one of the prime examples of uh, uh, of design thinking that is used. The other thing is, like I said, there are uh, there are no set approaches. You have to do a lot of user testing and a rapid prototyping. So uh, I would encourage entrepreneurs to go and look at the sites of Make My Trip and Clear Trip side by side. Now, Make My Trip is a very very heavy website they have so many things going on together at the same time on the slide while the clear tip trip is a very simple uh, design uh, now it, it could in a, in a way be compared to something like a Google or a Yahoo Google has a very simple and intuitive design while Yahoo provides a lot of information in the search field Google trumps Yahoo in terms of uh, website usability uh, by leaps and bounds Similarly, when you come to Make My Trip and Clear Trip, going by that logic, Clear Trip, with its simple and uh, easy to use design, should be a should be a site that people prefer to use and get information from. But when it comes to airline industry, it's just people want more information and they like uh, the like to see a busy site, and that's why Make My Trip as a site does much better than than Clear Trip. So, uh, in terms of, is there one set of value that you can 
uh, that you can follow and uh, be ready with uh, with the right design for your customer answer is no so you have to prototype uh, you have to do a b testing to see what customer will like and uh, go through these examples of uh, uh, companies like make my trip and uh, uh, and clear trip to see uh, how it is very different from industry to industry and i think thirdly one, one of the one of the best uh, i think designed uh, apps that I've used in an Indian context in a long long time is this uh, is this app called Haptic and what it did was um, uh, uh, for example uh, there uh, they what they realized is that now people are all into texting and uh, a lot of times they have to go on various sites to uh, do price comparisons and uh, sometimes call up their friends do all kinds of social uh, uh, social shopping so what they've designed is they've designed this product wherein you can uh, interact with one of their agents and he will do uh, kind of all the work for you and give you the best uh, thing that you need from various sites so in a way they are uh, bridging the gap for people who may not have kind of the access to various sites and giving you a very uh, list by list of uh, uh, items that uh, that you may want and uh, they will access various sites for you to give you the give you the right product. So these, I think, would be uh, the three examples in the Indian uh, context from design thinking standpoint that I would recommend you to look into. Thank you, thank you, Rishab. Uh, moving on to the next question, um, uh, one of the entrepreneur Ismail is asking, could you suggest some um, uh, research areas? Um, when it comes uh -huh. to design thinking, I mean, what would be basic possibly the what would possibly be some research areas in design thinking? Sure, um, I think one of the things that uh, uh, that one could look into is uh, uh, is the Stanford D School. So, if you want to learn more about what design thinking is, there is a wonderful, wonderful resource out there for all of you to access. Uh, it's the uh, it's the design school. That was started by Tom Kelly, who is the head of IDEO, and he started that uh, that school uh, in uh, Stanford, and uh, it was backed by uh, uh, Steve Jobs from Apple. So that school is actually like at the pantheon of anything. If anybody who wants to learn, and what they've done is they've uh, gone ahead and made all their resources available for people to access for free. So anything that you want to learn, that should be your first and the primary primary source, and it's a wonderful source. Uh, free materials, uh, uh, they do a lot of workshops. They give you tools to conduct workshops in your companies. Uh, that is one place for you to learn more. The second is uh, about this company uh, called IDEO. Uh, now IDEO is headed by Tom, uh, was headed by Tom Kelly, and uh, uh, they started the D School, but a lot of resources that IDEO has and a lot of examples that IDEO has are uh, the client are their work with clients which are um, uh, which are completely uh, different uh, way of solving problems that you will find anywhere else and they've also made a lot of their case studies public so might be a good idea to look into how they approach problem solving and just to give you a two quick examples um, in fact I came across this uh, uh, so I, I had a had the fortune of visiting IDEO's office in Boston and spending a day with them um, and uh, what they they shared some of their examples with me and one of the examples that I found very fascinating was uh, so IDEO was engaged uh, by Bank of America to solve for a problem which was that uh, they had these uh, Bank of America had these ATMs all over the country but they realized that not many people were using it and they wanted to know why so what I do did was they sent their research team to see how people were using ATM and they realized that when people were using the ATM uh, they would kind of keep looking at the, looking behind behind them and earlier people thought that okay maybe they are like uh, the ATM is right in the middle of the road they are, they are probably worried that somebody might mug them what uh, but when they applied their when they empathize with the customer when they applied these uh, rapid prototyping principles I do realize that we as humans generally get distracted so once you are taking taking out money from an ATM if a car passes by or a person passes by you just get distracted and you look back and that kind of uh, makes your experience of uh, using the ATM 
uh, that uh, that verse you kind of sometimes forget your pain so what they did was a very very simple solution they located very small mirrors uh, along with every ATM so when you were withdrawing money if anything was going past you could see that reflection in the mirror you didn't have to like turn back and get distracted by it which essentially meant was that the experience of the user in using the ATM uh, increased and uh, the only thing I do needed to do was to apply these small mirrors and uh, and that is that was the beauty and again one of the most celebrated cases uh, which Bank of America and IDEO kind of highlighted that this is the power of design thinking you can use a lot of consultants to try and solve the problem but once you uh, truly understand the real pain point of the customer and why and how they're interacting with your product you will be able to devise solutions which are not only innovative but at the same time economical as well and uh, increase your efficiency by uh, multiple times so definitely look at dspool definitely look at IDEO uh, they, there are tons of videos out there uh, that um, uh, uh, people like Tom Kelly have uploaded on YouTube so you can look at those videos as well and that would be a very good start for you to uh, uh, kind of learn more about uh, design thinking and lastly uh, we highlighted about uh, Doreen Lorenzo she works with frog design or she used to work with frog design and uh, frog design also has kind of uh, provided a lot of their materials uh, online if anything um, uh, if there is any other resources that I come across I will be happy to share uh, and if you have any specific questions, I'm like I'm happy to kind of answer them uh, 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 about specific resources. But these three resources should uh, keep you covered for uh, for learning uh, the basics about design thinking for sure. Thank you, thank you, Risha, for that. Uh, another question by uh, Datta. He says, how how to use design thinking in service industry in India? Uh, could you be a little more specific in terms of uh, which service industry? Um, like, okay, so I'll um, um, see. I mean, there are there are various uh, ways by which you can service uh, your customers, uh, say better in a way. Uh, take an example of in PTM, and I'm uh, and I'm uh, I'm asking this question. With a uh, with a complete uh, understanding, and I would plead ignorance that I don't know exact what exact specific industry uh, he's talking about. But more broadly, in the services, uh, in in the services sector or in the service industry, if you look at look at banking and financial services as uh, as a product that uh, many people in India would use now, uh, Paytm has completely revolutionized how you interact with money. So let me. Uh, if in, I don't know if people, uh, how many of you are aware about Kickstarter, but look at that website uh, once, and what happens in Kickstarter is people kind of uh, say that they want to create a product and ask people to pitch in money for that. The biggest uh, type of project that uh, gets funded on Kickstarter and and is the most popular one is designing a wallet. So one thing is very clear, people all over the world are not happy with the uh, with the wallet that they keep in their back pocket or uh, that they carry in their uh, other bags uh, so there are 40 percent of the projects on Kickstarter are projects to redesign the wallet that you have and now look at something like a Paytm which is some which is which has completely made it uh, cashless so you only need to have a mobile in a mobile app and you can store money in that and there are many mobile wallets I'm not uh, I'm not uh, calling uh, uh, Paytm as a pantheon of uh, innovation and mobile wallets have existed before as well but the way they've been able to understand the consumer psyche in India and uh, and able to offer them uh, say a mobile experience and being very pervasive with advertising in terms of uh, some of the advertising that they were able to do in terms of uh, uh, having uh, uh, people use uh, uh, Paytm in occasions where only cash was used, which was um, uh, in festivities or paying for an auto and, and stuff like that. So, uh, in an Indian context, in an Indian services context, you have to think about uh, uh, about design thinking of how you can take the service from uh, uh, from in person to uh, uh, 
to digital but that's only one part of it there are uh, other parts wherein so for example a company like a seek sherp uh, sherpa it will it prides in giving customers experience which is very customized very uh, uh, like completely uh, driven to their need and that is also one of the one of the big innovations that you that you could have in the Indian context, but again, with full understanding that uh, we need more specifics about the question to to be able to answer it. Uh, so th thanks for that, Rishabh. So he just responded back saying that he is talking about the um, ser customer service, or, or basically, more, to be more precise, auto service industry. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, in the office service industry, uh, like some of the examples that I've come across. Uh, uh, be it from a standpoint of uh, your uh, companies like that rocket banked companies like office yes so there is a uh, the administration of procuring say uh, office supplies is completely broken uh, so how do you ensure that uh, you are able to bring more efficiency into that uh, that would be through a product like an office yes uh, uh, similarly uh, sorry to interrupt he, he he said auto auto service industry Oh, auto service industry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll. I think this is something that I could take offline right now. I. Uh, I wouldn't have a very specific example for him, but I know one of my. Uh, one of my entrepreneur friends. What he's. Uh, uh, again, not in the in the vicinity of uh, the question that he's asked, but not uh, uh, not directly. But one of my friends, he has what he's started is he started uh, something called a, a super bike uh, rental uh, service. So in a way, you not only have a uh, so basically essentially a Zoom car for super bikes. In a way, uh, what what he realized was that people who are looking for uh, uh, who who want to use super bikes are are the ones who want to kind of use it as an experience. So create a product wherein you would have uh, people uh, get super bikes on a on a hourly or a uh, on a on a day basis without having to kind of uh, buy similarly i'll uh, give you an example of uh, uh, and again i i hope i hope this in the vicinity will answer answer the question is um, you have to look at uh, something like a, uh, an industry like an agriculture uh, now very very traditional industry. Not many people kind of innovate in this area. Even even farmers don't want their son to become farmer. But what we are seeing is a lot of innovation happening. There are many people who are designing new solutions for this industry. Now, one of the solutions I came across was that rather than have farmers buy uh, farm equipment or lease farm equipment, why not offer farming as a service? Uh, so and why not, uh, if by that logic, why not uh, have people? Uh, Pay for farming service as they would pay for Uber. Uh, so what they could do is they uh, a company will uh, so this company that I know uh, what they do is they charge a per hectare rate. Let's say it is um, ten thousand rupees per hectare. They will send their trained uh, personnel with trained equipment to the farmer's field. They will do all the farming activity related to harvesting, ripper binding, all kind of things, and then. They will collect the cash for doing the farming activity and uh, take the machine with them. So now the farm, the entire cost for farmer uh, gets taken care of. He doesn't have to worry about finding labor, managing labor. Uh, it cost of uh, buying or leasing or or keeping the machinery goes down. Uh, so this is a very very uh, kind of say innovative solution that has come up in India. It has not uh, come up elsewhere in the world. But people who understand the local context and uh, and can design solution around it are the ones who are going to succeed. Uh, so again, I, I I know I haven't specifically answered the question, but in the periphery of uh, how you can design solutions, uh, I hope this is helpful. Thank you, Rishabh. Uh, another question by uh, Ismail, and there's another entrepreneur who, who also wants to know about this. So they they're asking about how, can you give some examples of design thinking applications in education sector? Or maybe at the education technology sector, at tech sector, university, etc. All right. Okay. Hmm. Uh, again, good question, and this is one sector where a lot of uh, innovation has started happening. Uh, I would recommend everybody to look at this company called the Rumi Project. 
and uh, so it's R U M I and then project it's a canadian based company uh, in fact in 2014 they won the award for uh, uh, so there was this global entrepreneurship event that hap uh, that happens every year and they uh, nominate and select a few companies which are very innovative and for every sector and uh, Rumi project won that award in the education sector what they did was very simply what they realized is that the public uh, education system in developing countries mostly is broken uh, and it's not because of uh, the lack of uh, quality teachers or lack of infrastructure or lack of resources or books it's primarily a combination of a lot of different things but primarily because you don't have uh, you don't you can't provide children enough in provide enough engagement with children teachers definitely play a huge role but sometimes the motivation of teachers is also lacking in a uh, public education system so what they did was they uh, uh, raised a lot of money to buy a lot of tablets uh, cheap tablets uh, from ch they bought a, a lot of cheap tablets from china and what they did was as per every uh, class they put in the content uh, of offline content on these tablets and what they did was they designed they gamified the whole system wherein children could not only uh, get the concept through tablet in the form of a game rather than the form of a uh, form of a text that they need to read and depending on a teacher who needs to kind of uh, make sure that they understand it was a globally accepted uh, curriculum designed in the form of a game which depending on the uh, uh, depending on the uh, aptitude of the child irrespective of his age and ir irrespective of his class depending on his aptitude would give them uh, one level after another which uh, allows people to kind of uh, uh, use the, uh, have this innovation in, in uh, uh, technology and they were able to create a massive impact and in fact uh, are, are doing really well so that is one company in edtech that I would like to lead you to check out the second example and I think it is it is probably a more interesting one is that uh, is of this company called uh, Duolingo and now it has become the uh, largest provider of uh, uh, la second language training in the world uh, and in fact uh, very recently uh, on reddit uh, they were a the AMA threads that they have so Bill Gates was running an AMA thread and uh, he was asked uh, what app does he use to learn different languages and he, he said Duolingo and then the founder of Duolingo replied to that saying that uh, so I've designed Duolingo to be available to everybody uh, for free and imagine this uh, someone in a developing country who wants to learn a new language can access it who is purely doing it to escape poverty and at the same time the richest man in the world is also using the same app to learn the language which means more money cannot buy you better education and, and that was a very very powerful statement to make similarly what Duolingo also does is that uh, there are around 90,000 uh, uh, sorry there are around uh, huh, there are around 90,000 native Irish speakers but on the Duolingo app there are more than 1 million people who signed up to learn Irish so in a way there are 10 times more people in the world wanting to learn Irish than their actually native speaker of Irish exists in the world and these are some of the innovations that have uh, come up in the edtech sector that people have been able to kind of uh, design and take forward. Thanks, Rishan. Thanks for that. Um, yeah. I'll just take two more questions now. Uh, so, uh -huh. one of the questions by Rachna uh, Pujar, she's asking how can rapid prototyping happen with limited resources at ideation stage with an entrepreneurial team of one or two members? Right, so this is where you'll have to be uh, very, um, um, very creative. Now, uh, the rapid prototyping stage actually does not require you to have a lot of resources. In fact, it is best if you do not have a lot of resources to do rapid prototyping. And like I said, rapid prototyping, prototyping means thinking with your hands. Uh, so again, I'll just give you an example. Um, at UPenn, when we were uh, we were given a design challenge wherein we had to design a new wallet that people would have and uh, what the professor did for us was they said that okay you have five minutes now what that meant was that literally you could not 
even you did not even have time to think and you kind of had to design uh, the, this wallet for your uh, fellow participant so the way you prototype is you ask them what is most meaningful to them you try and see uh, like uh, you try to know uh, some of uh, the things that they sp spend time on and the things that they enjoy doing you make a picture of what what could be most meaningful to them and then uh, design an experience for them that to be meaningful so for example uh, um, one of my partners who knew that I like writing and I like traveling so what she did was in a, in a very quickly uh, she just created a A4 sheet put it uh, put a, uh, the 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 clay that you have uh, and she kind of created a wallet uh, form shape in which she created um, a, a world map on front of that wallet and uh, as and when the country that I traveled to, I could scratch off the the map. Now it wasn't perfect. In five minutes, whatever she could create, she created. But it gave me a sense of the kind of wallet that I will like, uh, and that is what you need to do. Even with limited limited resources, what you need to do is you need to really think through what is this person is going to like and just create something that that person can like touch and feel. Because um, I, I'll tell you something about psychology. And uh, again, if you are interested, look up this guy. Uh, he teaches at MIT. Earlier, he was with Duke. His name is Dan Ariely, uh, one of the best thinkers that I've ever uh, ever heard. And um, he uh, did this experiment wherein um, he did Lego experiments with uh, with college graduates, and he and he told them that look, here is here are a piece of uh, Legos. Create a shape out of it, and then after you've created the shape you will be asked to kind of uh, purchase it and um, whatever money uh, that you uh, that you are willing to pay if i accept it i'll give you this lego and i'll take it and take the money from you the so the the whole experiment happened across hundred uh, hundreds of students the key thing that came out of it was that once you once you have created something howsoever terrible it looks you tend to overvalue it your emotional connect with it increases because you've experienced it that is the thing with rapid prototyping you don't need a lot of resources you just need to create something with the least amount of resources that you have and in, increase that emotional connect for both you and your team and your customers so that they're able to evaluate it and understand how they need to take it uh, uh, move forward with it. So, in rapid prototyping, just ensure uh, that uh, it is it is actually a uh, is beneficial for you if you do not have too many resources to waste. I I, I hope it answers the question. Thank you, Risha. Moving on to the last question. Now, a lot of the entrepreneurs have asked for asked this question. Um, could you suggest any good books to get in-depth knowledge on design thinking? And also, one of them even went on and asked for a good to suggest you a good uh, suggest them a good institute wherein they can you know uh, get a certification course on design thinking or something. So if you could suggest some good books or an, and an institute that would be really nice. Okay, so a couple of things. The first is uh, uh, there are there are a lot of books written on design thinking, but I think none better than. Uh, this book written by uh, David and Tom Kelly, uh, founders of IDEO. Uh, they've written this book called Startup by Design, uh, which is uh, which is actually like the the book that you need to read. And if you read nothing else but that book, I think that uh, suffices for uh, for understanding what uh, what design thinking is. So, uh, and again, um, available widely uh, in India as well. Uh, so feel free to feel free to grab a copy of that book. In terms of courses, so Coursera runs a, a course in collaboration with Darden University, which, according to me, right now, in terms of all the resources available out there, is the most uh, well-balanced course for somebody who wants to get introduced to the concept of design thinking and move forward in that process. Uh, so that is the that is one course I would recommend them to do to start with. Uh, you have resources from Stanford Design School. Which are which are great, but they are yet to kind of uh, uh, design a curriculum for uh, say somebody who is coming to the design thing for the first time. Uh, so yeah, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, as a starting point, the Startup by Design book by uh, David and Tom Kelly uh, from IDEO 
and in terms of course, this uh, Darden course on design thinking uh, offered through Coursera, these would be my top two recommendations. Thank you. And, and yeah, and Coursera in collaboration with Darden also provides you certification and if you wanted to, let's say, after doing this online course, if you wanted to continue your studies, they also have a, a residency program wherein uh, you uh, kind of, uh, you move, you go to Darden study for 15 days and then for the remaining 6-7 months, uh, I don't know if they've changed the structure of it, but for the remaining 6-7 and seven months, you study remotely. So they kind of give you an opportunity to go and experience and study in a collaborative setting with professor and with other people around, from around the world as well. But a starting, a good starting point would be um, University of Virginia, Darden School of Business, course on design thinking offered through Coursera. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Risha, for that interesting session. Thank you to all our attendees for participating in the webinar. We are glad that the questions get, kept coming in, but due to lack of time, we are unable to answer all. If you found the session interesting, please feel free to blog or post about it. The recorded version of the webinar will be available on YouTube. Thank you once again and have a nice evening. Thank you, Rishabh. Thanks so much for the lovely presentation. No, thank, thank you. Thank you so much for uh, uh, inviting me and thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to share this content. I hope people found it useful and uh, uh, happy to participate again. Thank you so much. Sure. Thank you. Bye. Have a nice evening.